every single time I mention the words Arch Linux, someone says, hey Brody, have you tried the Arch Fi installer? Hey Brody, have you tried the Anarchy installer? How about this installer? How about that installer? Okay, I will try your stupid installer. And you know what? I'll spoil the video for you guys. Anarchy, really, really good. It's not perfect. I do have my problems with it. But overall, it is an incredible application. I will probably be checking out ArchFi at some point in the near future. I don't have a set date on it, but expect that to be coming sometime soon. Now, much like with Arch Linux GUI, Anarchy also has a separate ISO. That ISO can be grabbed from their GitLab page going to this button right here. I'm obviously going to download the x86-64 version. Now, do keep in mind that because this is a separate ISO, that you do have to trust the developers and, you know, trust they're not going to seal all your data. But being Arch Linux, it's very easy to verify that they're not actually going to do that. Also, keep in mind that even though you are doing this through a custom ISO, Anarchy is just an installer. It is not an Arch Linux based distro. Anyway, when you first boot up the ISO, it's going to drop you into a grub window. This is a slightly different theme from what the original ISO has, but the options on here are exactly the same, and it does still have the speech option like the modern versions of Arch Linux do have available. I'm just going to go with the regular boot, and it's going to start it up like it normally would. I'll cut back to when we actually see the installer. I didn't have to run anything to get the installer open, it automatically opened this window for me. If you do ever close for whatever reason, let's say I press Control c for example, then if you run Anarchy, that is going to restart the installer. Depending on where you quit from is going to depend on where you jump back into it, but I'll get into that in just a bit. Now this is never mentioned while you're running the application, but all of those letters that are highlighted in red can be jumped directly to by just pressing that letter. So let's say I want to jump directly to French, pressing F is going to do that. Now some things like German and Greek share the exact same first letter, so pressing G is going to cycle between those. If your key map is not listed in this list going down all the way to the bottom, there is a list of other key maps, so if you're using some like, I don't know, weird thing like bone. I don't know what bone is, but if you're using bone, uh, you can select it there. In my case, I'm just going to go with, I think my keyboard is US or UK. They're basically the same. It just changes whether you have a dollar or a pound sign. This information page is great and every single installer should have one of these. Basically, it's saying this is not a distro based on Arch Linux. This is just going to install Arch Linux. Before you go and report any errors, go and check out the Arch Wiki because maybe there's a way to fix it already. But if you want to talk, then we do have these places you can contact us. Honestly, that's great and I love that it's here. Going to the next step though, this is going to take us into the first setup stage. Before we go and install anything, it's going to prompt us to actually update the installer. So if between the time we download the ISO and we go to use it, it's out of date, it will download the latest version. So you don't have to go and just download a whole new one, which would be like three and a half or so gig. But before we do that, I just want to mention that there's no back button. So if you made a mistake on any of those earlier steps, let's say you wanted to change from English to Dutch, for example, how do we go back and do that? Well, you might think that going down to the cancel option here is going to let us do that, but it doesn't. It just goes to the next step because what we're actually canceling there is canceling updating the ISO. So if you actually want to go back and modify those things, the only way to do so at this stage is by control seeing and then going all the way back to the start. Now that's not always the case, it's just with these early steps, there's no way to go back. Anyway, speaking of that cancel option, I don't like the way it's coloured. So the one you currently have selected is the one that is coloured yellow, and the deselected one is in red, and I guess that would be orange. I was actually really confused by this when I first saw it, because I assumed the one that was more coloured was the one you had selected. I just didn't notice the little flashing cursor, and sometimes the cursor isn't actually visible. In my mind, what would have made more sense is using the same color as the general text as the one you don't have selected. This would make it very clear that the uncolored one is not selected. Anyway, all of that was just a minor complaint. So there are two options here that you should care about, and the third one that never click it. Uh, download and rank new mirrors, that's going to go and do it automatically for us, or if for whatever reason we want to do the mirror list manually, we can do that as well. Now, when you do that, it gives you the option of what text editor you want to use. I like that it's not dropping me directly into Nano because, I've, I've said this before, I actually don't know how to use Nano, 
Um, I know, it's dumb, but yeah, I, I don't know how to use Nano. But yeah, if we want to go and select exactly what mirrors we want to use, we can go and do that here. I'm just going to leave them as they are and actually quit out of that. Now, I would have assumed that if we quit out of that, it would have taken us back to the previous screen rather than using the list we currently had. I didn't realize that was going to be a problem till just now. Luckily, we will be able to go back and fix it. It's just not obvious that's a thing we can do. So let's go and set our locale. Obviously, there's going to be other locales down the bottom here, but one of the ones I'm using Australia is in the list. Let's set the time zone. This is actually a really convenient way to do so. So I'm in Australia, I am in Adelaide, and there we go, now we're good. Now, before we go and petition the drives, I just wanna show you how the application acts in an inconsistent way. So now if we go to cancel, it's gonna take us to a main menu and we can go and select any of the things we want to select. So let's say I want to go back and reset my locale, for example. We can go and do that. And then it'll take us directly back to that menu. I don't know why this menu is not accessible directly from the start, because that is incredibly convenient. I uh, know I don't want to quit. I want to jump back to petitioning the drive. There should just be a button always on the screen to access that. I did think that would allow us to go back and fix the mirror list, but that's not one of the things in the list. You can do it through the command line session, but that sort of defeats the whole purpose of using an installer like this. Anyway, moving on from that, if we want to go and petition the drive, there's a couple of things we can do here. All basic stuff. I'll start with the manual setup because you know what this doesn't do? It doesn't have some weird custom application to go and make new petitions. It will list out the petitions you currently have. So this drive actually does have an existing Arch Linux install on it. But if we go and just press space on the SDA drive, go to edit, it's going to prompt us to use something like CF disk, F disk, or G disk. Honestly, this is great, and every installer should just do this. Stop trying to make your own custom thing. But because I'm lazy, I'm going to cancel that, and we're going to go cancel that again. It'll take us back to... It'll take us back to the main window. I don't know why it did that. Um, I've seen it do that a couple of times. And I did see that error message, but I'm not really sure why it's happening. Anyway, let's go and auto-petition the drive. Now, it's going to prompt us for the drive you want to use. It's going to prompt us for the file system we want to use. It does tell us that ext4 is the default, and that's great because ext4 is the default. I know that ButterFS is great, guys. You can stop telling me about ButterFS, but ext4 is still the default. And it's going to prompt us if we want swap. If we say yes, it's going to prompt us for the swap size. It's going to prompt us for GPT petitioning. I am not using UEFI on this VM, so I'm going to say no. Then it's going to tell us everything it's going to be doing. In my case, because I have data on this drive, it's going to erase it. And I'm going to say write changes. That's not going to take that long, and it should be done in just a moment. Now, this doesn't happen normally, but because we went to the main menu once, every single time we finish one of the steps, it's going to take us back to the main menu. So the next step is going to be installing the base system. So this is going to be deciding on what we actually want on our system. I totally get the point of the first four options. If you want to have something set up basically straight away, you don't want to worry about configuring it, setting up what software you want to have, setting up what kernel you want to have. All of those first four options are great. In my case, though, I'm going to go with the advanced option. And this is first going to prompt us for what kernel we want to have. Or not just what kernel we want to have, but also whether we want base devel. I don't know why base devel is attached to the kernel option. That doesn't make any sense. So we have vanilla kernel and vanilla kernel with base devel. Why? Why is it like that? I... I don't know. And this is going to prompt us for the kernel we want to use, but for some reason, base devel is attached to the kernel option. So there's Arch Linux base and Arch Linux base devel. I don't know why base devel is even an option in the installer. Is there a reason why you might not want base devel on your Arch system? I can't think of one because very shortly after you set up your system, you're going to need something from base devel, so you might as well just install it. Also, why is it on this screen? Why is it with the kernel options? Why is it not just a separate option? It would be way less to sift through and give you the exact same result. In my case, I'm going to go Arch Linux dash base dash devel because obviously I want base devel. Then it prompts us for the shell. 
Now, I presume this is going to be your login show, but it's not entirely made clear. I'm just going to go with Bash because Bash is just always the safest option. Also, as it says, Bash is the default. Then it lets us select the bootloader we want to have. One of the options there is none. The reason why you might want to choose none is let's say you're dual booting Arch Linux alongside some other distro and that other distro already has, say, Grub or Systemd boot already installed. There's no point giving this distro its own bootloader. That is just going to cause a lot of issues. In my case, though, I'm just going to go with Grub. Then it's going to prompt us for the way we want to do our networking. Obviously, Network Manager is just the easiest thing to go with. Now, it has detected we are using a 64-bit system. So it's going to go and automatically add multi-lib for us, which actually is kind of great because if I wanted to do something like Steam, then I wouldn't need to go and add that myself. If you don't want multi-lib, though, you can very easily just say no to this and it won't do it. Do we want to enable DHCP at boot? I'm going to say yes. And then do we want to go and set up Wi-Fi? Judging by the fact that it's gone to no, it must have detected that because we're in this VM, we don't have Wi-Fi enabled. So I'm going to say no. Do we want OS Prober? That is for doing multi-boot. Once again, if you're using some other distro's bootloader, you would obviously don't need OS Probe. And do we want to go and install a desktop environment? Now, if we say no, it is just going to say, hey, do you want to just use TTY then? And you can do that. And it's fine with that. In my case, though, I'm just going to say yes. So we can go with a customized desktop, which, you know, I don't really care for. There is a clean desktop environment. This is basically the desktop environment as you would get it when you first install it. Or you can go with more window managers. Now, why it says more window managers, I don't understand because none of the other two options are window managers. This should just say window managers. Let's go into the clean desktop environments. So we can actually select multiple things in here. Let's say I wanted both GNOME, KDE, and let's say I want Mate as well. When we're done with that, we can click on done. Then it's going to prompt us to go, because we installed GNOME, whether we want GNOME Extra, I'm going to say yes. Do we want Minimal Plasma? Sure, why not? Mate Extra, why not? Now, because we are in VirtualBox, it's actually prompting us for VirtualBox guest utils. That is a really, really nice addition. One thing to note is if you want to install extra things, don't click on Done. Instead, click on Back. That will take you to the previous menu. Then you can go and select, you know, whatever window managers or whatever else you want to install. It's fine in this case though, so let's just go forward. Would you like to install XF86 input touchpad drivers required for a laptop touchpad? I am not using a touchpad, so I don't care. Would you like to install a display manager? This is a graphical login. I don't really care for them. If you choose yes, it will give you a couple of things to go with. I'm going to go with no, because it will actually go and make an X in it file for us. Now, because we selected multiple desktop environments, I don't know what's actually going to be inside of that file. I am very, very curious. Now we're pretty much in the final stages, so set a host name. I'll leave it as Anarchy. Select Select a root password. I'm going to use the password I always use, the totally secure password, which totally isn't the word password. Definitely not. No, definitely not. Then we can go and select to add new users. I'm going to say yes, because it always makes sense to have a user that isn't root. Let's give it the name Brody. Uh, sure, I'll give you my full name as well. Brody Robertson. There you go. Use a password again, and once again, a totally secure password, which totally isn't the same password as root. Definitely not. You cannot hack my VMs. Definitely not. Do we want to enable pseudo privilege for Brody? Yes, I'm going to do that. Otherwise, there's no point in making this account. And there we go. If we want to go and modify one of these users, we can go and do that, or we can just move to the next step. Now, edit user actually gives you options that didn't exist when you made the user. So let's go and edit Brody. And we can actually change our shell now. I assume the reason why it defaults to Bash is because Bash is the only one we have installed. But if we want to use something like, I don't know, uh, Dash instead, you can go and set that there. It probably should give you that option when you actually make it, though, just because there's no reason to not include it. On to the next step, then. This is going to go and actually install stuff. I don't know why it didn't jump us back to the menu like it did before. I'm really not sure what the deal is there. Maybe that's because that was the final step, but I could be missing something. Let's go and try to install this. I haven't actually set up my mirrors properly, so it might take um, quite a while. Hopefully it doesn't take too long, but I'll cut back to when it's done. One thing I just want to mention is even when it's still downloading stuff, 
the bar is at 100%. Um, I don't know why. That's just really weird. Now, I can't say I've seen this problem before. I'm not sure why that happened, but I'll run through it again and show you what the ending screen is like. Hey guys, I might be a moron. Do you want to know why it didn't work the last two or three times I tried to install the packages? <laughs> it could do a much better job at telling you what the problem is, I didn't have enough storage space. It knows how much is going to be downloaded. It knows how big the root petition is going to be. Telling you you don't have enough space is a very easy thing to work out. It's, it's just some basic division. But now that that's done, we have the ending screen. We can go and reboot the system, power off the system. We can go and even add a new user. Or we can go and check the install log. So this will tell you everything that, you know, has been installed, everything that happened with the output and all of that fun stuff. So if maybe something didn't get installed or maybe a mirror isn't working properly, you can go and check that. But we're going to leave that for now. And for some reason, it changed the theme. I'm happy that this happened because I've seen this happen at some point and I don't know why it happens. It seems to just randomly happen when you do certain actions. Now that's done, I've rebooted the VM and sadly I did have to get rid of the three desktop environments I'm using and I swapped back over to a window manager. I don't actually remember which one I installed, but as we can see, Arch is installed as we would expect it to be. I didn't mention this earlier, but this does do the thing that I don't like, you know, the thing where it merges the root and the home, but you guys should just assume that's what everything does at this point, because that's what everything does at this point. Anyway, if we go and do a start X, that will start whatever window manager I installed. Awesome WM, that's what I got. Honestly, Anarchy is a really great installer, and I would recommend this to anyone who wants to install Arch Linux and do it from a TUI environment. I haven't used ArchFi yet, but I hear ArchFi is also very good. I'm very happy that that problem I saw before was a problem that I caused and not a problem with the application because that would have seriously changed what I said at the end of this video. Yes, like every single art installer, there is a bunch of other stuff that could be included, but a lot of the normal stuff you do during the installation process doesn't have to be done at that time. If you want to go and customize what general applications you have installed, that can be done later. If you want to go and modify your window manager, that can be done later. It does doesn't have to be done when you're installing Arch and something like Anarchy just gets the job done. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think of Anarchy and whether it's something you would ever actually consider using or if you just like to waste your time and are going to manually install Arch every single time. I would love to know. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Bro Robots and Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five of YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.